Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Wuryawan, and today we're going to talk about Go Anywhere, Do Anything, Prime Lens. Let's go! Before we continue with today's video, if you are a current subscriber of my channel, welcome back. I hope that you will enjoy today's video and thank you always for your support for my channel. If you are a new viewer of my channel, also welcome to my channel. I hope that you will also enjoy today's video. In this channel, we'll talk about photography, filmmaking, camera lenses, micro filters, as well as music, home recording, guitar, rock metal, that kind of stuff. So if you are into those kind of things, please consider subscribing to my channel. And now let's continue with today's video. In today's video, I want to talk about your go anywhere, do anything, prime lens for micro four thirds. Now you might be asking this question, hey Gary, why don't we just use a zoom lens for our go anywhere, do anything lens like the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 or the Olympus 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8? Well, the answer to that question is that there are some benefits of using prime lens. First, that it almost always has larger aperture when compared to zoom lens. My zoom lens right here that's recording this video right now has the largest aperture of f2.8, while this prime lens right here, uh, the Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7, it has larger aperture of f1.7, which means two things, better low light performance as well as more background blur or bokeh. And second benefit is that I'm a hobbyist, I'm an enthusiast, I do this just for fun. I love to take pictures, I love to create videos and uh, camera and lenses are part of my hobby. And that means uh, Prime Lens is a better choice for me because it's more fun to use. I'm more involved with the process of photography or filmmaking when I'm using Prime Lens. Uh, I'm not just focusing about the result, but I'm also enjoying the experience of using the prime lens, setting it up, trying to frame the perfect shot uh, and get the best result that I can. Now, with that out of the way, the next question is, what is a go anywhere, do anything prime lens? Well, the answer is quite simple. It's a prime lens with the focal length and performance that you can count on to do multiple general purpose photography and video. So it's the focal length that you can use for different kind of photography like street photography, like portrait, landscape, sceneries, food photography, just general all around stuff that you can just take to go out and about and guaranteed to get a good shot with that lens. Versatility is the keyword right here. The lens needs to have a very flexible focal length. So anything between 12 to 25 millimeter, in my opinion, is a go anywhere, do anything kind of focal length for a prime lens. Anyway, speaking about focal length, don't forget to check out my video about focal length. I will link it up here. Now, to be able to be flexible with your focal length, I think there needs to be a sense of familiarity with your particular focal length. For example, I'm not really a big film guy. I started photography using cell phone cameras back in the day when I'm still using my Nokia cell phone. And then I graduated to a DSLR and then I go to mirrorless micro four touch camera. I didn't go into film camera at all. So my preferred focal lengths, uh, because I'm starting with cell phone cameras, uh, I really enjoy 28 millimeter equivalent full frame focal lengths because it's what the uh, cell phone cameras have at that time. And if you started on film camera, I think your preferred focal length will be either 35 millimeter equivalent full frame or 50 millimeter equivalent full frame. All of these focal lengths that I mentioned to you, they are within the range of my go anywhere to anything prime lens, which is between 12 to 25 millimeter. My preferred focal length, 28 millimeter full frame is 14 in micro four system. And if your preferred focal length is 35 millimeter full frame, that is about 17 in micro four thirds. And if your preferred focal length is 50, that is 25 millimeter in micro four thirds term. Today, I have two lenses that match the criteria of being in the focal length range between 12 to 25 millimeter. One is the Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7 and the other one is the Panasonic Lumix 20mm f1.7. But briefly, I also want to mention other lenses such as the Panasonic 
14mm f2.5, Sigma 16mm f1.4, Olympus 17mm f1.8, and also Panasonic or Olympus 25mm f1.8 or 1.7. And before I forgot, also the Panasonic 25mm f1.4. Now, the ultimate question, which one of these lenses should I choose? Now let's start with the Panasonic 14mm and the Panasonic Leica 15mm. Which one should I choose? Well, for me, it's a little bit easier to decide on this one. I will choose the Panasonic Leica 15mm simply because of some reasons. First, the focal length difference between 14 and 15 is negligible. It's not really that pronounced, so I can just easily go to 15mm without feeling uh, losing a little bit of the width of the 14mm. And also, the 15mm has larger aperture of f1.7, so better low light performance, better background blur with the 15mm. Also, it has faster autofocus, and it also has this aperture ring, which really helps if you want to be more involved with the process of photography, selecting your aperture directly from the lens. Be mindful, though, that the aperture ring doesn't work on Olympus bodies. Now, when should you choose the 14mm instead? Well, the 14mm is a smaller lens when compared to the 15mm. It is a pancake lens similar to my 20mm. So if you need the most portable, the smallest lens that you can get between that focal length, uh, I think the answer is the 14mm. However, if you don't need uh, the ultimate smallest one and you much prefer better performance as well as better a uh, low light performance and background blur, 15 millimeter is the answer. Next, how should we decide between the Panasonic Leica 15 millimeter, Sigma 16 millimeter, Olympus 17 millimeter, and Panasonic 20 millimeter? These are somewhat very similar lenses, both in terms of focal length and also in terms of aperture. So, uh, which one should we decide? Uh, and I think because they are similar, they require a little bit more thoughts so that we can decide which one is the best. To answer that, if you need the widest of them all, I think Panasonic Leica 15mm is the answer. Well, with wider focal lengths, there are two things that you should consider. First, the field of view, because it is wider, automatically you will get more angle of view, you will get more things in the frame. However, you should also consider that your subject will not stand out as much as if you are using tighter lens. Also, although it has large aperture of f1.7, it cannot produce more background blur like the other lenses as well. If you are okay with these compromises, then I think Panasonic Leica 15mm will be your solution if you need the widest one. If you want your subject to stand out more in the frame and you want more background blur, I think Panasonic 20mm f1.7 is the answer. With tighter focal lengths, automatically your subject will stand out more. Also, you will get more background blur. Well, I really enjoy the Panasonic 20mm because it is somewhat an in-between focal length that can act like two lenses in one. It is in between 17mm, which is 35 in full frame, a classic focal length for go anywhere, do anything lens, and 15mm, another classic especially for street photography. So I really can have the best of both worlds with just a single small tiny lens. Also, this is a pancake lens, so this is thinner when compared to a regular prime lens. The only drawback of the 20mm is the slower autofocus, especially for video. However, for still photography, especially single autofocus, the autofocus performance of the 20mm is still more than good enough in my opinion, especially if you are using newer bodies from Olympus and Panasonic. However, if 20mm is too tight for you, you want something wider, but you still want to get that background blur like the 20mm, I think the answer is Sigma 16mm f1.4. It is 1mm tighter when compared to the Panasonic Leica 15mm, but it has larger aperture of f1.4, which can help you to get more background blur compared to the Panasonic Leica 15mm. I think that's a good choice, like an in-between 15 and 20. Olympus 17mm is also a good choice. I used to have the Olympus 17mm a few years ago. It's also a good 
in between focal lengths between 15 and 20 mm. However, in my personal experience, 17 is somewhat not wide and not tight enough for most of my needs. It's just that weird kind of in between focal lengths that I don't really use that much. So I ended up not using that lens. However, the optical performance as well as the autofocus performance and the build quality of the lens is really good. So I can still recommend the Olympus 17mm f1.8. Now, if your priority with your go anywhere, do anything prime lens is background blur so that you can make your subject pop all the time, then I think the option is all the 25mm lenses from Panasonic and Olympus. There's the Olympus 25mm f1.8, Panasonic 25mm f1.7, and I think there's also Panasonic 25mm f1.4 that will give you even more background blur or bokeh. In my personal experience, I don't really enjoy shooting 25mm focal lengths. I used to have the Olympus 25mm. It was too tight most of the time, so I much prefer the 20mm. However, I know that there are lots of people that really enjoy 25mm because it's not too tight for them and they can make their subject pop even more. So if 25mm for you, uh, those three are the option. In the end, there's no single lens from this list that is better than the others. All of them has their own strengths and weakness. You just have to be very mindful about what your priorities are. Uh, you have to consider aspects such as the field of view, how much background blur that you need, uh, the performance of the lens, and also the physical form factor of the lens, how big or how small the lenses are. However, we can summarize all that we just talked in this video into these four simple points. First, uh, if you need the smallest lens from all the lenses that we just mentioned, uh, which has the most reasonable focal lengths in between everything and still can produce great result, I think the Panasonic 20mm f1.7 is the answer for your go anywhere, do anything kind of lens. For the ultimate low light performance, if you need larger aperture, then the answer is Sigma 16mm f1.4 or the Panasonic 25mm f1.4. For my own personal recommendation, there are two lenses, the Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7 and the Panasonic Lumix 20mm f1.7. I have them both, I use them both pretty frequently, and I'm very familiar with both of these lenses, and they are my go anywhere, do anything prime lenses. And that wraps up today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that you really enjoyed this video and find this video to be useful. Please comment down below and share with me what is your go anywhere, do anything lens. Also, if you have any question about this video, feel free to comment down below and I will try my best to answer them. Also, don't forget to support my small channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. It will really help me to motivate me to keep making this video.